Democrats, they're still doing it. I mean, we reported here a couple of weeks ago on the renewed efforts by Russia to target American elections, once again, to try to promote Trump's candidacy and to try to hurt his Democratic opponent. And it's not like I was reporting on some obscure thing a couple of weeks ago when we covered that story. I mean, there it is, headline in The New York Times, spate of mock news sites with Russian ties pop up in the United States. Russia's still doing it. They're doing it again, and it is as ham-handed and embarrassing as it ever was. And they're doing it for the same transparently obvious strategic reasons as they do everything. The difference is this time forewarned is supposedly forearmed, right? Knowing that it's coming should make us better prepared. Except this time around, some social media companies, particularly Twitter, have no interest at all in even trying to stop what they're doing to target the election this time around. And this time around, many Republicans seem to have lost any qualms they might once have had about helping out with what Russia is doing, even with the really obviously fake stuff. But now here's something new, something new on top of that. It is no longer just Russia, because why would it be, right? I mean, the way it's gone, why wouldn't other authoritarian countries who want to weaken the United States and want to denigrate democracy and want to try to get Trump back into the White House, why wouldn't they throw their hats in the ring, too? It's not like Russia's paid much of a price for it, right? Russia appears to have purchased themselves a significant chunk of one of the two major governing parties in the United States for the price of a few sanctions and a few intelligence officers being unable to travel for fear of arrest. That's basically the price they've paid for the Republican Party and the conservative movement hopping into bed with them in a very serious way, right? That's cheap if you're willing to buy it. And so, of course, it's no longer just them. Headline today in The New York Times. China's advancing efforts to influence U.S. election raise alarms. Quote, researchers and government officials say China has adopted some of the same misinformation tactics that Russia used ahead of the 2016 election. Quote, covert Chinese accounts are masquerading online as American supporters of former President Donald J. Trump, promoting conspiracy theories, stoking domestic divisions, and attacking President Biden ahead of the election in November, according to researchers and government officials. The accounts signal a potential tactical shift and how China aims to influence American politics, with more of a willingness to target specific candidates and parties, including Mr. Biden. In an echo of Russia's influence campaign before the 2016 election, China appears to be trying to harness partisan divisions to undermine the Biden administration's policies. Some of these Chinese accounts impersonate fervent Trump fans, including one on Twitter that purports to be a, quote, father, husband, and son, who is, quote, MAGA all the way. The accounts mocked Mr. Biden's age and shared fake images of him in a prison jumpsuit or claimed that Mr. Biden was a Satanist pedophile while promoting Mr. Trump's Make, Again, Make America Great Again slogan. Here's one of these, these China-linked accounts described by these researchers promoting that Trump video over the weekend that showed an image of President Biden tied up hand and foot as if he, as, as if he were being he kidnapped or, or held hostage. Here's another one of the China-linked accounts showing a, a different video, one for Easter. Um, it's an animated video that shows President Biden being assaulted and beaten up by a giant Easter bunny. And I'm not going to show you the video because it's violence against the president of the United States. And yeah, it's for Easter. Isn't that great? But it shows the president falling down and looking hurt and being pummeled. The New York Times reporting that researchers have linked this new activity to a, quote, long running network of accounts connected with the Chinese government. The accounts are not always great at disguising the fact that they're actually Chinese. Like in this instance, where they're trying to look like an American account, you see the name at the top there with the little eagle and the American flags. It says Liam, Republican Party, America first, the American flags, the American eagle. And this post is an attempt by this account to reply to a Trump video with basically a big, a big attaboy, 75 million Trump fans can't be wrong. The problem with this is that they forgot they weren't supposed to be typing in Chinese. They weren't supposed to be typing in Mandarin. So it's only the Google Translate that tells you what it says. Oops. 
If you're trying to be Liam, Republican Party, American first, maybe toggle back to English before you post your compliments to President Trump. The Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, which has done some of the research um, quoted in The New York Times today, particularly about these, this campaign's operations on Facebook, also notes that the influence operation appears to be active almost exclusively during business hours in China, during business hours Beijing time. All their posts appear here in, for us, what are the overnight hours, but those hours correspond to the work starting at 8.50 a.m. Beijing time, stopping at 6 p.m. Beijing time with an hour off for lunch from noon to one local time during which they don't post at all. So these are accounts and users that are occasionally lapsing into Chinese or forgetting to turn off the settings that show that their web browsers are set to operate in Mandarin. They're operating on Chinese business hours, including a nice solid hour for Chinese lunch. They appear pretty obviously linked to Chinese government influence operations. But what they're doing now this year is trying to mess with our election to try to help Trump get back in there and to hurt Joe Biden's chances just like Russia has been doing since 2016. And the Trump years have shown us thus far that we have proven to be, and forgive me, but we have proven to be not just inept, but spineless when it comes to putting up with this from one authoritarian country that wants the worst for us. What are we going to do now that it's two of them at once, both pulling for Trump? Joining us now is Tiffany Shu. She's a technology reporter at The New York Times who's reported out this and other stories on the same topic. Ms. Shu, thank you very much for being here. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. So what is the evidence, as you understand it, that this appears to be linked to not just operators in China, but to the Chinese state? Well, like you said, there there have been some slip ups in these accounts. Uh, several of these accounts are many, many years old. Um, and for a while, they post exclusively in Mandarin. The narrative is very pro Beijing. Uh, it lapses at some point into America is bad. It, all of this is, is in Mandarin. And then they go quiet for a few months and then suddenly reemerge posting as Liam or Ben, MAGA all the way, I'm a husband, father, I'm 43 years old, I'm living in Los Angeles. These very convincing accounts that, that are masquerading as Americans, posting entirely in, in English. So they adopt these personalities that, unless you're a researcher or a journalist and your entire job is to look for clues that you're not an authentic account, for the average social media users, you're like, yeah, this is a person who supports President Trump, just like me. I'm going to I'm going to listen into what they have to say. And I've been focusing in, in in trying to understand this on some of the elements of it that are ham handed or that are that appear to be mistakes, letting it slip, accidentally showing that your your browser is set to Mandarin or sometimes accidentally posting in Mandarin. That interesting detail that was identified by the uh, Foundation for Defending, Defending Democracies about them posting mostly on Beijing time, except not during their uh, not during their lunch hour. I've been focusing on the things that kind of show it to be Chinese operations. But as you're saying, some of these personalities and some of the idiom they're using can be sort of convincing. Are they getting better at this? Are these things improving over time in, certain, in terms of their ability to masquerade as Americans? Oh, leaps and bounds beyond what the Chinese used to be capable of. I mean, if, if the Russians are seen as being ham-handed, they're like the the teenager who's like, oh, mom, yeah, I was totally studying at the library and not drinking at a party with my friends. Then the Chinese for a long time were the toddler who was covered in paint saying, no, no mommy, I didn't just paint the entire wall like you told me not to. <laughs> like very, very enthusiastic, but very see-through. What they're doing now is, is a step change in, in their capabilities, right? The Chinese used to spread this narrative that was very pro-Beijing. It was very much... This is the Beijing party line. China is great. You know, back all of our, our policies and our philosophies. A couple of years ago, they shifted to Beijing is good, but America is also bad. And so you see them start getting involved in the American culture wars, trying to weigh in on, you know, gay rights, on crime in the U.S. 
But what they're doing now is focusing on specific candidates, which, which is not something most researchers, researchers have seen them do, right? They're, they're adopting these, these personalities that seem like real Americans, and they're trying to, and, and often successfully, generate real engagement from real people. I mean, one of these accounts was retweeted by Alex Jones. He has 2.2 million followers. So, so the idea that people, including people who have huge audiences, are, are interpreting these accounts as real voices is, is pretty concerning to, to people who've looked at China as kind of an inept influence operator for a long time. Yeah, it's concerning not only that it's working, but it's concerning to have what appears to be a state-directed effort like this um, focused in this way at this time ahead of the election. It really does feel uh, like we haven't learned much. But I learned a lot about it from you today and from this reporting. I hope you come back and talk to us about this as you continue this, this work. It's fascinating and important stuff. Thank you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.